My name is Crystal Ann Compton. I am the founder of the Lightworkers Lab. Some of you might have found me on YouTube where I have hundreds of videos about spirit. I just love talking about it. Um, I am a writer. I'm also a channel and a spiritual teacher. And one of my, like, <laughs> what, something I'm really proud of are these intensives that we are creating, launching for the Lightworkers Lab. The next intensive is going right back to the intuitive intensive. And most of you have been in the intuitive intensive. To the Intuitive Intensive 2020 launches the first week of February, so we're rolling it out. We're going right back in. I know a lot of us have just been doing this for an entire year, but it has been so fun, and it's been such a pleasure getting to know each and every one of you. This really is kind of a small, very active, beautiful sub-community of the lab, the students, and so I just love doing it. I love being able to offer this, and I love being here. That's who I am, and one of the things that I love to talk about and to teach about is dominion. And I do want to say that most all of you have heard me talk about this before. However, just um, give me a little space here tonight because for those who aren't acquainted with the concept of dominion, it's so fundamental, as you know, and it's powerful. We all really need to understand it. Now, historically, I've taught about dominion from kind of a place of fearlessness insofar as our dominion gives us the right to show up in this life and in all other lives and dimensions. We'll get to that. But it gives us the right to show up in a fearless way, completely empowered, because through dominion and the energy of dominion, we're actually living in alignment to who it is that we truly are, who it is that we truly are. Dominion is the literal vibration that we run when we are in alignment with our I am divine being. In order for any of us to do truly life-shifting spiritual work, we have got to understand who it is that we are and what we're capable of. Too many of us believe that we're not intuitive, or if we are, we're just intuitive a little bit, or it happens sporadically, but we're not living in the consciousness and the awareness of ourselves as truly magical beings, not just with intuition and psychic abilities, but as manifestors, as the creator of our reality. And it's my belief that the sooner we get into the reality of that, the sooner we can start making powerful shifts and changes. Now, as I said, I talked about dominion with regard to fearlessness or fear because as we explore our intuition and our psychic gifts and heads up, we all have psychic gifts because that's our birthright. We're intuitive, connected beings. But sometimes as we're exploring our intuition and we are expanding our consciousness, we kind of come into radical <laughs> new understandings of what's possible and also what's out there. So if we want to be a medium, for example, we just came out of the mediumship intensive, we have to understand that in doing so and in aligning to that, we are going to experience a variety of different beings. This is a hugely diverse spiritual landscape in which we live. And when we encounter these types of energies and these types of vibrations and beings, it can be very alarming and it can be even frightening. And so previously, I've talked about dominion from a place of there's nothing to be afraid of, though. We have every right to be here. And also, I've spoken about the reality that the consciousness having the experience in the space, in the ecosystem, is the consciousness that is in control of that experience. Meaning, if you encounter something while you're out playing in this beautiful cosmic landscape that you don't like or that you're not ready for, the consciousness that you are can conclude that experience and move on to something else. You're in control of everything. This is why so many of us as children, we were deeply intuitive. I know I was. Talked to spirits, saw energy, saw sacred geometry, was able to know things without really knowing why. But some of what I encountered <clears throat> was very frightening to me as a child. Now, and I've talked before about how I had a couple of really cool Pono parents, as we say in Hawaii, very solid, who were also intuitive. And so when I was afraid of some of the things I was encountering, I was able to go to them and say, hey, this is what it is. And they would give me context and they would equip me to deal with it. 
but most children, most people didn't really have that kind of support and infrastructure. And a lot of you as children probably had these magical mystical experiences, couldn't understand them, and then shut off the ability at some point because you were frightened. So a lot of this dominion conversation is about you don't need to be frightened of anything. You are powerful. In fact, the dimensions we're going to be talking about tonight, the universe in which we all exist, this was created by you, you. And God said, let us make man in our image. God didn't say, let me make man in my image. There were other consciousnesses present at the time of this creation, and I would put to you that you were one of those consciousnesses, in fact. The you that you truly are outside of this incarnation, which is also you, but let's just reserve that for a moment. The you that you truly are is a God. That's scriptural. That's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus said, you are all gods. It's just that you don't know it. You don't live it. You don't breathe it. And so you don't experience life this way. Well, here we are talking about the fact that you can experience your life this way in 3D reality if you just know who you are. The reason we suffer, the reason we struggle, and the reason we enter into patterns over and over again, get spit out of that pattern just to enter into another one that looks, feels, and smells just like the previous one is because we have misidentified on a fundamental level, we've misunderstood who it is that we are. Crystal Ann Compton doesn't realize that she's a God, a creator, a manifester. Crystal Ann Compton, along the way, has clicked out of alignment with this truth about herself and has identified not with her divinity, but with her bank account, with her failed marriages, with her failed relationships, the projects and the jobs that didn't work out for her. She's identified herself according to that, and she's forgotten who she truly is. And so dominion is a call. Excuse me, I have my great Dane here. You might hear him groan and thump around. <laughs> dominion is a call back to who it is that you truly are. It is the vibration that we run when we are in alignment with this reality of ourselves. It is the ultimate power position of the life. Now, as it concerns the Akashic Records, dominion is important because dominion is the highest vibration we can occupy in our 3D reality. When I am in alignment with my I am, that part of myself that exists outside of universal architecture, when I am running that energy purely, I am at my highest vibration in this reality. And it's from this vantage point that I am able to see so clearly into this experience, meaning this 3D experience, and also into the other experiences that I am having simultaneously, which I am, and also the experiences that came before this one, for example, past lives, and the experiences that will come after this one, future lives. From the I am, the oversoul, I have supreme vantage point here. I can see it all, and I can move the pieces around as I will. I can move the pieces around in my day-to-day -day life, but with the Akash, with the Akashic records, I can make what I like to call money moves. <laughs> I can move big things around. Whereas in previous lives, I've created karmic patterns because of things that I've done. And I don't subscribe to karma like most people do. I subscribe to habituation and patterns that we enter into because we've done it that way. And so we carry them into new experiences, including lives. However, from that vantage point of dominion, we're able to see very clearly, aha, that pattern showed up in a previous life. Whew. That pattern is showing up in this life. Why is that pattern here? What am I supposed to learn from it? Okay, I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to clear it. I'm going to adjust and align my timelines to best serve not just me in 3D reality, and this is important. We don't go into the Akash or the Akashic records just for this life in this reality. 
I mean, you can, and you can make moves and shift things around, open things up, close things down that, that affect this incarnation. But truly, you have the power in the Akashic Records to move things around in all lives, in all iterations, in all dimensions. You have the, you're in the power position to make moves like that. But you want to make sure when you're doing that and you're considering that for yourself and for somebody else that you're coming from the highest vantage point as possible. It's not a coincidence that for millennia, literally millennia, the only people who could work in the Akashic Records were the priests, were the initiated, because it is sacred work. And the lay person was, was an, didn't know how to enter the Akashic Records. They didn't even know about the Akashic Records, much less how to work in them. However, because we are shifting and consciousness, or human consciousness is expanding, we are now at a place where we can, as lay people, don't use that word for yourself because you're magical, but we can be the stewards of our own records. And we can work in our own records. We have what it takes right now. But it's important that when we do this work, we are coming from it from that dominion vibration, where we are taking into consideration more than just what we want for this life, but we're really looking at the Akash. Now, the Akash, to me, is the membrane upon which all things in all of creation has been recorded everything since the beginning of creation until the end of creation and there is no end to it all of it is recorded systematically in a very organized fashion in this hall of records and that's what makes it so powerful you can learn so much about your life i was just reading maria cotter's post in the group where she's talking about oh i i thought i was coming into the akashic records intensive so i could read for other people alas I'm being brought into my records to read myself and to read about the trauma that I've endured and to look at this. And I didn't expect it, but that's the, the depth and the poignancy of the work that you can do in the records. And one word about this, if you find these shadow aspects bubbling up as you're here in this intensive and as you're working in your records, if they are presenting themselves to you as they are with Maria, consider this a beautiful welcoming and an invitation because now is the time for you to clear it. You see, it wouldn't be being offered to you if now wasn't the time for you to clear it and move on from it and use it in the ways that you can and discard the rest. And even though this kind of shadow work can be painful, the best landscape to do this work in is the Akash because the Akashic membrane in and of itself, <laughs> has such a high, powerful frequency. How many of you have already experienced the nature of this frequency? When I work in the Akash, it reminds me a lot of Archangelic energy, which is the highest energy apart from I am energy and God energy that I work with. The Akashic record is right up there in frequency. And one thing to know about the Akashic record is that you need to bring in your intention with regard to the work that you're doing for yourself and for others. You should have that, but you should be very clear about that. But know that when you're in the records, you're completely supported, completely. The frequency of the records is a healing frequency. It's an aligning frequency. It is aligned already with source energy purely and powerfully. It's not like you can just be a bull in a china shop and get into the records and start messing things up all over the place. It's not that we can't misstep, we can, but don't worry about it if the intention and the clarity is there, if the dominion is present. If you're coming into the work from that power position in consciousness, you're not going to F it up. You're not. Can you imagine, though, <laughs> if you didn't believe in your own power, if you didn't know who you were, if you didn't truly understand the scope of what it is that you can do, not just with this life, but in the Akashic Records, and you went in there, you wouldn't understand it. You wouldn't know what to do with it, with that kind of power. That's what this program is for, to teach you about this. And that's what this lesson is for, so that you understand that that power 
is yours. Can I get an amen? You've got to know that before you work in the records. You've got to know that you're fully empowered and entitled to be there. That is dominion and dominion. As it's the alignment of yourself with your I am and with source energy, dominion will never steer you wrong. You can't mess it up when you're in dominion. Now, for some of you, you'll go immediately into some strange panic. <laughs> well, what if I can't get into dominion? I don't know. If, have I ever felt dominion? Don't worry about it. <laughs> it is our natural vibration. It is an alignment that needs to take place in an understanding. And you have it. You are that. It's just understanding that and embracing it. Moving on from dominion, which is what gives you the power to do this kind of work. I want to transition into a discussion on dimensionality. I actually have a PDF that I've printed out and that I'm going to make available to you. I'll upload it tonight to the student portal. Um, and again here, this is just a blueprint for you to kind of hook into, maybe allow you to visualize the landscape a little bit. And I, I want to say the model that I'm teaching you tonight or I'm talking about tonight is just one of many. There are many dimensional models. You can throw a rock, hit somebody who's got a different idea about dimensionality than I do. The reason I share this particular model with you is because this is the model that works for me. And this is the model that lines up the most closely with how I've experienced this landscape of spirit. Before I tell you about the dimensions, let me just say that you exist right now in all of them. You're not just locally oriented in 3D and that's it. You actually exist in all dimensions in this universe. And we're going to talk about dimensions one through nine tonight. I think I think Lauren's talking about dimensions 1 through 13, and she's going to get specific with the Akashic Records here. But there are some models that go up to 342 dimensions. Actually, I'd like to recommend a couple of books if you're interested in this subject, because it can get, can get really, really sophisticated and detailed. The first is a book by Barbara Hand Clow, or Clo. It's called The Alchemy of Nine Dimensions. This one will crack you open and spin your brain around a little bit and put you back together. It's a really cool read. Um, some of what I'm teaching tonight very loosely comes from what I learned from Barbara, but also this book, which I love. This book is called Ascension Magic, and this uh, is written by Christopher Penzak, and he's got a few books uh, that I have. He writes in a really understandable type of a way, and he breaks down the model I'm teaching in this book. So if you guys are interested, you can look for these. I highly recommend them. Let's get right into it. Are you ready? Let me get a sip. Let's start with Dimension One keeping in mind that you exist here as well. Dimension one is the dimension of Gaia, Earth energy. It is the dimension of planetary essence and consciousness. It is truly the frequency of Mother Nature. And Mother Nature is real. Gaia energy is real. In some of the channeled work that I've done, Spirit has told me that the frequency of Earth of Gaia is actually an archangelic frequency. And in fact, the Earth is an archangel. We're not going to get too deep into that, but the Earth is a sacred, sentient being with a consciousness and awareness. Dimension one is the grid for this very consciousness. It's also the dimension of the building blocks of creation and physical reality. As it pertains to the earth, we're talking about atoms and molecules, and we're talking about the elements, fire, air, earth, and water, all the spirit of this the energy of this is contained. Well, it's not contained. It is, it orients. The point of origin for this is dimension one. Also, for those of us working with Gaia's crystalline grid, and we hear Lauren talk about this quite a lot, or the heartbeat of Gaia, that is all in dimension one. And when we want to interact with planetary consciousness, Gaia consciousness, for example, some of us are here to heal this planet Absolutely. Some of us are here to communicate on a deeper level with Gaia in order to shift what's happening right now on and in this planet. Those of us who are doing that kind of work, we are working in dimension number one. 
I also want to say that this, and, and, and let me also say that the higher we go in dimensions, the more inarticulatable it becomes. It's hard to talk about because you have to experience to know, experience it to kind of know what it is. Up until about six, I can articulate it, but after six, it gets a little amorphous. With dimension one, it's not just Gaia, it's the consciousness and the essence of all planetary bodies. Because Venus has a consciousness, Mercury also has a consciousness and a spiritual awareness. It's connected to something, and you could say there is also archangelic energy in these planets as well. Moving beyond our solar system into other spaces, galaxies, all those planetary bodies, they are alive and aware in their own way. And at this fundamental level of their very essence, that's dimension one. So if you wanted to commune outside of Earth with these other planetary bodies, you would connect with dimension one in order to do it. Dimension number two is the consciousness of planetary inhabitants. And again, this is all planets, but we're going to talk about Earth. Specifically, this means in dimension number two, we can interact with the consciousness of beings occupying nature and the four elements. So the four elements are present in dimension one, but there are beings that actually occupy those four elements, the Deva kingdom, the, the elementals, they, they all have a part in these elements, nature elementals, fairies, tree people, sprites, and to some degree, the devic energy. Uh, the devas are like the little gods of the different creations. For example, without getting too carried away, a tree. I've got a mighty oak in my front yard, and on this tree, there are many leaves, and there are many branches, and of course, you go down underground, you've got a beautiful root system. There is a deva, there is an over, an overseer for the root system. There is a deva, there is an overseer for all the branches and how they interact with the rest of the tree and the leaves. So you have all these little fiefdoms, if you will, that are being governed by these elementals, these consciousnesses that are keeping this tree alive and helping it to thrive. And then there is the overseer of the entire tree. This overseer oversees the other overseers. There's this intricate, beautiful system of hierarchy throughout nature, and this is all incorporated in dimension number two. Nature as it is, the energy of nature and the frequency of nature, this is dimension two energy as well. This is also the dimension of all the consciousnesses upon, within, and aligned with Earth. This includes trees, this includes water, this includes animals, this includes minerals, everything that makes up the planet, everything upon the planet, including humans. That essence is, the point of origin for this is in dimension number two. For those of us who work with nature elementals and the fey, for those of us who want to work with nature, maybe we have, we are activists in this way, you are working with and channeling second dimensional energy when you're working with that. Now, of course, as humans, we're part of nature, we're part of the beings on this planet, but we, we have our own category unto ourselves. We can intersect and interact with dimension one and two very easily, but we have our own consciousness grid and our own frequency and energy. And that is contained, excuse me, I gotta stop using that word. The point of origin for this is dimension three. 3D. You hear me talk about 3D all the time. That's where we are right now, a dimension that is constrained by time and space, a dimension that is infected with the illusion of Maya, which is the illusion of separateness. This is important to understand. Before we ever got here, we knew that we'd have to deal with it as well. This infection that gives us the idea that you are somehow separate from me. They are somehow separate from us. This is not true, and when we get to the fifth dimension, we will understand why that is, but here that is a pervasive illusion that we always have to wrestle with. Now, when we find ourselves in spaces of emotional depression or feeling disconnected or feeling unloved or not loving, we have clicked out of alignment with who it is that we truly are and into the illusion of 3D. 
we've somehow got sucked into, oh, my bank account isn't where it needs to be. I'm not worthy. Or, oh, my marriage has fallen apart and now he's left and I'm here. Separation, aloneness. Again, before we ever got here, we knew this was the landscape we were coming into. We knew that 3D reality was a reality that had such beautiful joys, such beauty generally, but also the potential for pain and so easily misidentifying who it is that we are and, and what we're doing here. We knew that as soon as we got to 3D reality, we would obtain a kind of amnesia that sets in at around five or six years of age where we forget where it is we've come from and why we've come here. And we we move into figuring out who we are in this illusion of a reality. But 3D is not is not closed off from the other dimensions. You can access all of the dimensions at any time by virtue of existing in all of the dimensions all the time. And from 3D, we have access to 4D, very easy access, let's say. And as an aside, the dimensions most proximate to ours are the dimensions we most easily occupy. This is 2D and 4D. In 2D, we have the animal kingdom, we have nature, we have wildness of a sort. And as humans trend and shift towards second dimensional reality in their consciousness, they too have a wildness to them and almost an animalistic nature. This is why we are a warring species. This is why we have humans that murder other humans and rape other humans. That happens all the time in 2D reality in the nature kingdom. There's no judgment though, because it's natural. But in 3D, when we're trending toward 2D, it's a lot easier for us to default to those kind of instinctive primitive natures. But the opposite is also true. On the other end of that spectrum, we have 4D, which we are getting into now. And 4D is the domain of the dreamer, meaning as soon as we fall asleep at night, we pop out of our body and each and every one of us does that every single night. The first landscape we encounter is fourth dimensional reality. This is also the domain of the recently deceased. When you die, when I die, we leave this body on and we set out on a journey to a higher dimension. But the first place we go is the fourth dimension. That's because the fourth dimension is actually a portal dimension. When you hear people who've had near-death experiences say, I saw a light and I went into a light. They're talking about, can you hear him over there? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear Ku, okay. They are talking about this portal. It's almost like a wormhole and they enter into it and they end up in a higher dimension. And I would say that would be the fifth dimension. We'll talk about that, but they have to start at 4D. The fourth dimension is also the landscape or the domain of the meditator. So when you're meditating and you click into that receiver position, meaning you are deeply relaxed and you've entered into a state of trance, that trance, that space that's happening in 4D. And if you become a practiced meditator or someone who works with active imagination you can you can just have one toe hooked into 3d and the rest of you in 4d and beyond but again it starts in 4d if you have lucid dreams and if you have astral projections or out-of-body experiences they typically begin in 4d one thing to know about 4D, though, is that portal is accessed not just by you. <laughs> it's accessed by many different beings. The beings that occupy the other dimensions use the portal of 4D to access you in 3D. So if you're talking to angels, or well, that's actually, let's put that aside. If you're talking to interdimensionals, say, they are utilizing the energy of the fourth dimension. Archangels, can they're, they're existing everywhere. Some angels do. Guides, ascended masters, they're utilizing the portal. And you're utilizing the same portal. And our portal in 4D is not specific to our universe. It's not, it doesn't only serve our universe. So let me break this down for you. Keep up with me because I know I get a little crazy here. <laughs> I want you to picture the universe like a house. And in that house, there are many floors. 
and each floor there's different rooms that you can enter into and those floors are the dimensions and you can utilize your access by virtue of existing on each floor to experience the dimensional nature of these spaces but there are other dimensions and other universes outside of this house this is just one house jesus said in my father's house are many mansions and this universe is just one of those mansions and i mention this because in 4d you have beings from outside of the house outside of our universal construct who access that portal in order to access our dimensions one example of this type of being would be shadow people now don't get confused with regard to shadow people because you'll know it when you encounter a shadow being they don't feel like any other kind of spirit or entity or energy that you've ever encountered they are a specific class of universal being that doesn't come from this house this is based on my understanding from channeling that i've done i've had my share of run-ins with shadow beings the signature of shadow beings is so different than the signature or the frequency that governs our house or our universe so as to be incredibly frightening when we encounter it because we fear what we don't know and shadow beings feel to us like terror like suffocating fear like the mythology of the old lady sitting on the chest or the cat sitting on the chest that's these are similar type experiences however normal everyday ghosts also appear in shadow to us sometimes when they're trying to materialize in front of us and sometimes even our departed loved ones when they're trying to make contact with us the first thing we see is kind of a shadow coming into being because that's the process that they use in order to appear to us totally nothing to be afraid of and neither are shadow people for that matter but different beings and i mention this only to alert you to the fact that it is it can be pretty chaotic in 4d and we're all experiencing it every single night. And if we are getting better with our meditation, we are going to be experiencing the energy, the frequency, and the beings of 4D more regularly. Here again, understanding your dominion here is so important. 4D is a thought form reality. So is 3D where we are. But there's a delay between our thinking it and our achieving it. And in that delay, we detour ourselves because we're all crazy with amnesia. But in 4D, it's an instant thought form reality and all higher dimensions as well. Meaning, when you find yourself in fourth dimensional reality by virtue of being in a dream, being in an OBE, or meditating and being in a trance, you find yourself in 4D, know that you're the consciousness having the experience, therefore you dictate it. And all you have to do is think your way out of 4D. Because 4D appears to us very similar to 3D. It looks a lot like Earth reality. And for those of you who have had out-of-body experiences, you can probably attest to this. First of all, there's a weird, silvery, sort of moonlit kind of glow in 4D that does not exist in the higher dimensions. Those higher dimensions are filled with color and beauty. But in 4D, there's like this smoky kind of silvery quality to it. and when you pop into it you as a soul know that you're there but the other beings know that you're there as well so if you find yourself in 4d and you don't like what you're experiencing just think yourself into 5d just say i want to talk to jesus i want to talk to my spirit guides or i want to go to heaven or i want to talk to god just think your way out of 4d and you will immediately leave it a lot of people have had harrowing experiences in 4D due, due to the chaotic nature and that portal that exists there. But if you know what to do and you know how to handle yourself, you can get out of there relatively quickly. Now, I talked about humans who trended towards second dimensional reality being a bit more animalistic, a bit more base in their nature. This is not a judgment, by the way. This is just a matter of vibration. Um, this other side of the spectrum, as we open our consciousness and as we enlighten, Think of it as tuning the dial on our frequency as we get higher and higher in our vibration. We have more and more access to all that is offered in 4D and beyond. And it's very easy access. 
So to enter 4D easily means if you know what you're doing, you can pop right out of it and go into fifth, uh, fifth dimensional consciousness and talk to Jesus or talk to Buddha. And that's what exists in 5D. So let's move on to 5D. 5D, I believe, is where we go when we die and we go through the light. Before we go through the light, that's all 4D. And that's where you see ghosts and earthbounds. Once you pass through the light, you end up in 5D, which we could call heaven, and which I would assert is a level of heaven, and probably the lowest one. And we're talking about our life review when we pass and we have a holographic experience, looking at all the things that we've done and in a feeling sort of way, experiencing the different moments of our lives. That's happening in 5D. For some of us, especially those of us who've had particularly hard runs on earth, maybe you had a lifetime where you were sick or you were, um, you were traumatized and it was a hard few decades for you and then you pass, you go into 5D and you enter into a period of what I like to call climatization, like you just need to restore. Your, your light body needs to be restored so you become a match for everything that's happening in 5D. But all of these things that we hear people talk about in near-death experiences, for the most part, are happening in this reality. 5D is the dimension of Christ consciousness, the dimension of Buddhic consciousness. It is the dimension of unity consciousness. Remember, in 3D, we are suffering from this idea that we are different and that I'm better somehow because I'm X, Y, or Z, and we have this Maya, this separateness, and in 5D, that all just falls away. There is non-duality. There is no illusion here. There is only love and understanding ourselves as cosmic beings. The fifth dimension is also the point of origin for those that we would call ascended masters. Now, ascended masters, there's different ideas about who they are. I'll tell you what my spin on it is, and you can take it or leave it, but ascended masters are beings who were once human. They lived this life. They know what it's like to be in this reality with all of the challenges and all of the loveliness that comes with it. And in their human lives, plural, their various incarnations, they have quote-unquote perfected, or they've enlightened to a, a significant degree. And that enlightenment allows them to be considered by us as avatars. Their awareness and their consciousness is incredibly expanded. Their psychic fields, I talk about this from time to time, the spheres in which we're walking around, the energy grids with which we which we're occupying all the time. For me, that might be out, that sphere might be about six feet in either direction or up, down, sideways. With Jesus Christ, you're talking miles and miles and miles of a sphere. And some of these avatars, just planetary awareness and consciousness, that's an ascended master, a, a human who has perfected the human condition to such a degree that now they can guide and help and assist the rest of humanity. Oh, this is, this, is a lot, this is a lot of here, so hold on. So Jesus Christ, for example, as he exists for us, the man, the myth, the legend, right? Jesus Christ and his energy, Christ consciousness, as it's accessible to us, has its point of origin in 5D. But Jesus Christ, the soul exists in all Ds and outside of all houses, just as we do. But insofar as it's collected and organized to do a certain type of energetic work, if you will, that orients from 5D. So if you have a special affinity to Jesus Christ, such as I do, and if you pray to Jesus, you meditate with Jesus, you work in the energy of Jesus, you are working in fifth dimensional reality. Same for Buddha, a huge avatar. If you're working in Buddhic energy, that is existing in fifth dimensional reality. You know it because it's colorful there. You know it because it's beautiful there. We also have soul groups who orient from there. And these soul groups are also those soul groups that are aligned to us because of our earthly 
incarnation. And what I mean is we have soul groups in different dimensions for different reasons, but the soul groups that are in fifth dimensional reality are the ones that are there who incarnate in this reality with us time and time again. Have you ever met somebody, never met them before, but when you shake their hand, you just have a sense, I know you on a heart level or on a soul level. And before you even tell me about yourself, I know that I'm a match for you. Those types of connections tend to be with those folks who are in our soul group. And you find those earthly bonds in 5D. Moving on from 5D, let's go into 6D. This is a interesting dimension and I think a lot of us are working with the energy of that dimension and we don't even know it. I tend to identify 6D as the domain of the interdimensional. And when I say interdimensional, I mean alien. I mean, I think so, but I don't think it matters when you're in 6D, but we're talking about beings and civilizations, consciousnesses that are highly ascended and who are working in their dimension and in ours to facilitate universal shift and ascension. Do you understand that? Because you've heard about shift, right? You've heard about ascension. Well, it would be a mistake to think that that's just happening in 3D. It's happening in the whole house. We're all shifting. The frequency is changing for all of us. And in 6D, you have certain energy and a, a certain kind of being that is working on this ascension that we are all going through. Now, to name a few of the interdimensional beings that have their point of origin for this purpose in six-dimensional reality, I will say uh, first and foremost would be Arcturus or the Arcturians. Edgar Cayce said that Arcturus and the Arcturians were the most advanced civilization in our galaxy and advanced not just scientifically, but advanced spiritually and specifically with heart technology and getting us to connect more deeply to our spirit, to our soul, to our heart, to love in order to shift. These beings that have their point of origin here are looking for other beings in other dimensions that will help them to facilitate the work that they're doing from 6D, which is why we have some people who have met their interdimensional guides or who totally know they're from Pleiades or they feel like they're a star seed or they channel and they bring forth information about new modalities, new understanding. This, a lot of this is coming down from 6D. 6D is the dimension of what we call morphogenetics, which I could more simply define as the dimension of sacred geometry. You see, anything that appears as created or manifested in 3D physical reality must first be created energetically. Sacred, sacred geometry, as we talk about it, is simply the templates for these creations. It's the templates for these creations. They're being intended and created first in 6D, and then they're being offered to us in 3D to bring it into physical reality. And those of us who are turning that dial closer to 4D, 5D, and we are fine tuning our enlightenment and expanding our awareness, we are in the prime position to receive this sacred geometry, this new energetic creation that is being offered to us from 6 D. And here I go to what I always go to, and I talk about Einstein, <laughs> and I talk about Ramanujan, and I talk about Tesla. I love Tesla because Tesla is, Tesla said, I'm talking to aliens. <laughs> Tesla's bringing forth free energy and all of this technology to help humanity. And he's doing it through the practice of meditation and opening his awareness to what's being offered in 6D. Einstein, same thing. Einstein received the theory of relativity as a result of active imagination. Active imagination is just meditation, but more dynamic, meaning he took a question with him into his meditation. He got into his 
receiver position, went into his trance, but not so tranced out that he wasn't cognizant of what was happening, and he played around with the issue of relativity. And from that meditative space, which again is the portal space, he received the inspiration for relativity. And then Ramanujan, who is the mathematician from India, who dreamt of these fantastical mathematical formula that they are only now beginning to understand. And this was the turn of the century, 18th century. It's like the 1890s, early 1900s. Um, he was brought from India to, I want to say he went to Cambridge because some professors noticed his incredible work. And then he went back to India. He passed at a very young age. But he said himself, I'm getting this formula from Shiva, from goddesses as I dream at night. At night, as you dream, you're 4D. There is a bounty being offered in all of these higher dimensions to us if we just put ourselves in the position to receive it. Tesla, Einstein, Ramanujan, these are people who are able to do that. Let me look and see if I wrote anything else down about this. Oh, also Syrians. Uh, for those of you who are interested in Sirius, uh, Syrians. Uh, I think Barbara uh, Handklaus says that the Syrians are the guides of the sixth dimension. Uh, so they have, a, they have a very strong energy associated with that reality. But technology, sacred geometry, advancements, modalities. This is so important for us light workers, I think, because for some of us, we are interested in doing what we can to shine our light in whatever way we can. Here we are in the Akashic Intensives. We're learning how to read the records so that we can do that kind of work. But there are all kinds of different things being offered, new modalities, new inspiration that will help us to go even farther. That's all coming down from this beautiful dimension. And as I said before, after you leave six, <laughs> you go up into seven, eight, and nine, it's much more amorphous. It's not that it's vague, it's not, it's very clear, but it's hard to describe. Dimension seven, this is the dimension of cosmic sound, the primordial om, or the word. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's powerful. In the beginning, before anything was created, there was the word, the sound of creation as it came into being. In order for God, creator, source, us, to create the universal landscape, we had to move. We had to act. And when we acted, a sound was emitted. This is a simple understanding for us here, <laughs> orienting from 3D. We call it sound. It's more like a vibration or a frequency that happened when creation happened. And this primordial ohm, and some folks call this the hue, which is also a very sacred, creative, manifesting word. This is how we say human, human. That sound, that point of origin for this house, this creative space, that is in seventh dimensional reality. For those of you who work with tones, vibrations, frequencies and also light language. For example, Kelsey Kinsey White here in this program, she works with light language. She actually delivers healings and attunements through her voice, the vibration of the sound that she makes. That is absolutely coming down from seventh dimensional reality. From 7D, we go to 8D, and this is hard to describe, but the simplest way to say it is that this is the dimension of light. And this is the dimension of creation. This is the dimension of the divine mind. I'm trying to think of a way to explain this because I don't want to lose you guys here, but the divine mind, truly God consciousness, God consciousness exists in 8D. But just play around with the idea that the God consciousness in our house, in our universe, is not the same God consciousness as in the universe 10 universes down. 
they have a different God consciousness. They have a different overarching frequency that governs that house. A different I am consciousness there than in our house. But for our house, our God consciousness, the I am, and indeed our higher self, that point of origin is in 8D. Now, I'm going to delineate here because I have to. Our higher self as it is reflected and present in this universe. That higher self is different than our I am. Remember, we exist outside of all universes. We created this. We created the whole playground of the universe and the dimensions. But within the universe itself and within all the dimensions, we are represented in our highest form. And that form is an eighth dimensional reality, if that makes sense. There's the you in 3D. There's the you in all the other Ds. There's, there's the mind that you operate in commonly, which is this mind we're, we're communicating with now. And then there's a higher mind. And there's also a lower mind trending towards denser realities. And actually, coming through channeling of late is a map of our minds. <laughs> it's a lot of different minds tied to different realities. And so without getting too crazy about that, just know that your higher self as it associates in this universe and reality, that point of origin is in 8D. You also have massive archangelic and angelic representation in 7, 8, and 9D, meaning the angels tend to hang out from there. They tend to hang out in that energy. Moving on to the last dimension that I'm going to talk about which is dimension number nine. And I just call this the stargate. It's the stargate. It's the wormhole. It is the last portal outside of this universe into all the other universes. If we want to go visit the universe 10 doors down, we have to first access the ninth dimension and the portal there or the stargate there in order to go rendezvous in those universes. And this plays upon the concept, of course, of the multiverse. It is not scientifically supported anymore to believe that we're just in one universe. No, there's many, probably an infinite amount of universes, and this is just one where we exist with all of our different dimensions here in this space. Dimension nine is a bridge dimension connecting the multiverse structures. And I wanna just kinda end this discussion by sharing with you a vision that I had many moons ago, and I know some of you have heard this, bear with me, but at the time that this happened to me, I was trying to map out and make sense of the different experiences that I was having, because when you work in the various dimensional energies, you will find that they are, they are different. They're, there's a thread throughout all of them, because we are we are all in this universe together, but they're different. They have their own frequency. And as I was learning about this and figuring out, hey, archangels feel a lot different than my deceased father, for example, or an earthbound feels a lot different from a, a nature elemental. I was trying to map out how, where, where, where were all of these beings and how did it work? And in a meditation one night, <laughs> uh, I was attended by angels, meaning as I was there, I had four angels step into my space and I could spend an entire hour describing them because they were beautiful beings of light. And while they didn't blast me with the totality of their frequency, because had they done that, I would die. I felt how powerful these beings were. Now, these were archangels that were associated with our, they were represented in our universe, because archangels exist outside of these as well. But just as I have a higher self-representation in this universe, so too do the archangels. And they came into that experience and they showed me what looked to me like an open dollhouse. So for those 
girls here, these women, you could probably remember having a little dollhouse when you were growing up, and there's different levels on a dollhouse. Yet as I looked at this, what looked like a dollhouse, I could see, actually I saw 13 levels. And as soon as I noticed one level, I was in it. And I began checking it out, starting with level number one. And in level number one, there were cities and there were people and there was a specific kind of hum. There was a sound, there was a frequency and an energy. And then I became interested in level two. And as soon as I did, I was there. And I noticed that level two was very similar to level one, just as 4D is very similar to 3D. But there was a little bit more space between houses and cities and people and the landscape, while similar, was just a little different, more, it was just wide, more wide open spaces is what it felt like to me as I looked at, as I looked at it. From there I went to 3D, same, similar but different. And I ascended through the levels of this house until I reached the top. And in the top, it was like an attic. I entered, the, as soon as I noticed the attic, I went into the attic and I started looking around and I was kind of, I was, I thought it was cool, but I, I didn't really understand what these angels were showing me. And they pointed my awareness to what looked like a little door, a hatch, <laughs> out of the attic. And I was encouraged to climb up out of the attic. Because it, again, as soon as I noticed it, I was in it. And so I noticed it, I opened the door, and I walked out. And I stood on the roof. <laughs> Stay with me. <laughs> I stood on the roof of this structure, and at that point, these attendants asked me if I wanted to go to a different house. And I said, well, what, 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 what kind of house? What are you talking about here? And they said, a different, a different universe entirely. And of course, being the cosmonaut that I am, I'm like, absolutely. However, who has done this before? Like, who has gone before? Who has done this before? And the long and the short of it is that we all have the capacity to do this. We all have the ability to do this. We all have access to all these dimensional spaces and ultimately the door that leads out of the universe. But avatars have done this. And in specific, they showed me that Jesus, Buddha, had transcended at this level. Now, let me pause here and say I'm not equating myself to those avatars. In fact, it didn't have the experience they did um, at all. I was just catching a glimpse of how the architecture worked. And they asked me if I wanted to check it out. And I said, sure. And the next thing I knew, as soon as I said yes, on the roof of this structure, I was flying through what felt like space. And I couldn't make anything out. It was like the void. It was very dark. Um, I, there weren't any stars, so it wasn't space. But I was traveling, and I felt it. And I could, at this point, I could no longer see the angels, but I felt them with me. I could sense their their presence as we traveled. And I couldn't tell you how long we did that. But at some point, I arrived at a new destination. <laughs> I, say, I would say I landed, but I, I didn't have feet in this way. Um, and I will tell you that this place was like nothing else I had ever experienced before. And whereas here on the earth, we have beautiful forests and mountains and oceans and color and life, there it was so stark. There was no color. It was like a moonscape. I didn't see any vegetation. I didn't see any people. And I remember trying to connect with the frequency of that place because as they were showing me, the house previously, I was familiar with it. Sure, I was seeing things in a different way from a different vantage point, but it felt familiar. I was, I knew what it was. But in this other place, I could not locate a frequency that I knew. And immediately I panicked because what I noticed was I couldn't feel love and I couldn't feel God. As I understood source, as I understood creator, as I have my companionship with source, I mean, this is something that is so precious to me. And I believe God is love. And what the angels told me was that I couldn't see this place because I was of a different frequency, a home signal, if you will. My home signal didn't match that home signal. 
And as I was getting more and more afraid because I was being confronted with this idea of different gods in different houses, as I just tried to explain to you, the idea of different God consciousnesses existing. I was coming up against this idea that the God that I thought that I knew, that I related to love, that I related to my experience, was not the God of every experience. That in these other universes, in these other dimensions, they were governed by a different frequency. And I panicked because in the absence of love, what use is any of it? I didn't, I didn't want it. And being challenged to think that there was existence that, wasn't connected to God as I knew God was very troubling to me, which is when the angel said, the frequency in this house is love, but better. You just can't feel it. You're just not of it. Like that scripture says, you are in this world, but you are not of this world, right? I was in that world, but I was not of it and I couldn't feel it. But they assured me that that didn't mean it wasn't good and that it didn't mean that it wasn't all created from that same source. And here's where I became acquainted with the idea of consciousness outside of structure and architecture, consciousness outside of that which we've created and built, the monad, the primordial me existing and vibrating who created all of these spaces. That's when I started aligning more to experiencing myself from that aspect. But it was frightening. And what it taught me was that we don't have any idea. <laughs> we really don't have any idea outside of our house what life is like in other universes and in other dimensions. And yet, we have access to all of it. And from 90, this is how we access it. Again, Stargate universal stargate and for those of us who are curious in this way to explore universal architecture and to get a sense of what's happening out there beings like the shadow people where are they coming from what universe is that what are they doing over there what does their dimensional structure look like for those of us who are interested in rendezvousing in those landscapes it's absolutely possible do i spend a lot of time doing that no i'm here busy in this universe and i'm here busy in 3d reality but it's possible. It's possible. So that is the model of dimensions one through nine. This is also typically called the dimensions of light model. And again, it's completely subjective. Your mileage will vary. But let me offer this to you. I think it is of incredible benefit to acquaint yourself with dimensional frequency. One through nine, starting there. How do you do this? Well, you go into a meditation, because again, this gives you access to all of these dimensional landscapes more easily. You go into a meditation, you get into the receiver position, which is that state of trance, and you call forward the energy, the frequency, and the beings of dimension one. And you spend some time there. What does that feel like for you? What are you seeing in your mind's eye? Are there tones and frequencies that you can hear as you are working in the energy of dimension one? Note everything that comes through. And so for this reason, perhaps have a journal nearby, making sure that when you write down the colors, the sounds, the beings, anything that comes through as you're working with dimension one, that you don't break your trance, that you stay in that space of receiving and as soon as you've received that frequency move on to dimension two and then dimension three dimension four through nine so that you can get acquainted with what it feels like and so as you begin to work in the records and as lauren starts or she has but as lauren builds upon the dimensions and how they intersect with the Akashic Records and the specific guides of the Akashic Records and where their point of origin is, you will have a familiarity with what that feels like. And you'll be able to recognize, oh, I'm dealing with an Arcturian. I'm dealing with, and they feel different, don't they? <laughs> I'm dealing with spiritual technology versus I'm dealing with Jesus energy, or I'm dealing with Kuan Yin energy, or I'm dealing with tree elementals. It's all different, but you won't know 
what that feels like or what you're interacting with until you take the time to ask it to come into your experience that you can feel it. And by the way, this kind of meditation works with all things, works with ascended masters, have a list of 10, go into a meditation, ask them to step forward so you can feel it, know it, be in it. Works with archangels as well. You can call each one forward one at a time. And if we ask, it will be given so that you can begin to map out for yourself what it feels like to experience dimensions. Well, thank you very much. That was fun for me. I hope I didn't get off on too many weird cosmological tangents and stuff. <laughs> you know, I get crazy. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I guess I just want to, if I would have heard this type of a teaching when I was new to spirituality, it would, have tur it would probably turn me off because it's too much. It's like way too much. Um, and so let me just say that you don't need to understand the landscape necessarily. You don't have to. If you don't want to, acquaint yourself with all the different dimensions and all the different beings. You will have substantial experiences in the Akashic Records by virtue of simply fine-tuning to the records without needing all this other stuff. This lesson is being offered for those of you who like this kind of stuff, like me, or who can appreciate having this additional information so that you can navigate the work.